everyone. Welcome to episode 4 of CHB TV. Today we will be talking about Ryan Kessler's injury situation, uh, Sestito and how he has impressed upon the fans here in Vancouver. We will be also be talking about the Vancouver Millionaires jerseys and uh, what we think of them. And we will be taking a couple of questions from the viewers. Um, make sure you stay tuned till the very end because we have a special announcement to make and I think it's going to be something you're pretty excited about. Welcome to our fourth episode of CHB TV, also known by Canucks Hockey Blog TV. As always, myself, Chris Golden at Light Force, is joined by Clay Emo and Ed Lau. But our special guest today is Gladys. And you might know her as the Twitter sensation <laughs> at Gloomy BB. Now, <laughs> before we jump into things, I want to know what does Gloomy BB mean again? Clay was asking. It was um, a name that was given to me actually by an ex-boyfriend. Uh, when I was living in Japan, there was this cartoon kind of character that I was really into um, by the name of Gloomy Bear. It's this pink bear that basically, you know, people are supposed to adopt, and then once they get bring the bear home, it turns a little crazy and starts killing the kids. And we have you out here. <laughs> what? Who invited her? Today? <laughs> This is a family-friendly show. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, I only asked because I thought the, you know, Canucks vernacular for people on Twitter to be like, gloomy B, I don't know, Chris Tan of Er. Right. <laughs> I don't like to show my fangirl-ness like that. Well, that's good. You know. um, <laughs> that's true. And I mean, the real reason we, we got you out with us today is obviously, you know, you know Puck. So I want to jump into a couple talks we're going to talk about. The first one is Ryan Kessler. He's out with a broken foot. Um, that's a bad break. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, and that's it for us today. <laughs> Tune in next time. No, I, but I, I, I remember, and I think it was the, I can't remember what year it was, Play that's, that's where your department comes in. Uh, when the Canucks faced Dallas, it, where that was in the four overtime game. Do you remember what year that is? 90s. Oh, no. Sorry, 07. That's 07. Uh, 07. 07. Was it 07? I'm 07. a gloomy BB. I was when Hank uh, scored the overtime. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because I, I, mean, I was at that game. I just want to brag. I was there thinking, and I've never left a game early. And here we are in 4 OT, and I'm like, at this point, I don't care if Dallas scores to someone. Um, fortunately, it was the Canucks. But I'm pretty sure Kessler actually came back from a long term injury, comes back in that game, breaks his finger out for the postseason. Right? And. I, and I remember at the time thinking, wow, what tough luck. Now, here we are today. He's just come back from his uh, wrist issue and was it a shoulder issue, I think? This so, time yeah. And, you know. Pick any part of the body. Yeah, which <laughs> blocks a puck, breaks his foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, maybe is it bad luck, maybe is he injury prone, but how many games did he play with a broken foot? I mean, I broke my ankle. I'm sure I walked off the soccer field. Which was not fun. I can't imagine having to play six more games yeah. like that. Yeah, and it's amazing. I you catch after hours. Henrik was talking about his Ironman streak, right, being the second longest in, in the NHL right now, and he actually referred to it's it's all a lot of it's luck, obviously, mm -hmm. right, and just the situation you put in. And he's blocked shots, I'm sure, before, but it's just the way the puck bounces off your boot or the way your foot sit, whatever it may be. He actually talked about the element of luck. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Kessler is just unlucky. You look at the way he plays, though, and you're not surprised, right? Mm -hmm. He's either getting hit or he's hitting. And it, there's never an uneventful shift for him, so it's, unfor it's unfortunate, but it's not surprising. It's not surprising yeah. at all. And, uh, you know, that, but that's what we like about him, too, and we want him to keep playing that way because otherwise the excitement's not there anymore. So it's kind of one of those things where you just, you know, you want to decide you want Kessler in the lineup as much as possible, of yeah. course, but he's not going to change the way he plays because if he does that, then the whole reason why he's so loved in the city is, you know, it's not there anymore. Right, right. I, I look at him and then I look at the trickle down effect of the lineup. It just throws everything in a disarray. Yeah. Raymond played fine in center for, for a game, but we'll see how long that lasts. Well, Raymond was brutal last night on the face off dog. Okay. Well, and well, he skated well. But it looks like the plan with Ebbett, have, you know, Ebbett's back down because we picked up Sestito. We're playing with three natural centers for <clears throat> however long it takes for Kessler to come back and train right. to be pulled or, I don't know, someone to try to put an offer sheet on someone and then have to place them on waivers to play. <laughs> Uh, back to sort of the Canucks, though. I mean, yes. we're talking about Kessler, and there's there's a hole in the center. So, so is, is Ray, May Ray the guy to fill that void? Do they do we see Burroughs come off the, the first line and do it? I mean, he he sort of acquitted himself 
well. There's talk about, well, Manny maybe saw another doctor. Mm, but yesterday Gillis said that he would never play again for the Canucks. He yeah. said it on After Hours. So at no time someone in the NHL has never gone and changed their Who knows? On Who knows? But, I mean, Gillis is also a tricky guy. He's a smart, mm-hmm. tricky guy. Mm-hmm. So as of right now, you know, the information that we do know is that um, you know, Manny Malhotra is not going to be dressing for a game again in Vancouver. Yeah. You can tell you're actually in the media, the, the, me- the information that we do know. <laughs> <laughs> see, you, you need to be more like bloggers. We just either we, <laughs> we just say what we think, we make happen, stuff up, or we make yeah. stuff up. <laughs> One day we have Volpatti, we're trying to sneak through waivers. He gets caught up in a numbers game because the yeah. uh, Canucks want to put Pinizzato into a conditioning stint because Pinizzato wasn't here for training camp. He required waivers either to go to the big club or mm-hmm. to the uh, small club, yeah. farm team, uh, unless someone else screwed up a spot. So that's what they did. Mm. Pinizzato gets claimed by Washington, and then we find out... Volpatti gets claimed by Volpatti, yeah, my bad, my bad. Don't worry. Volpatti gets claimed by Washington. We find out he loves the Canucks, his favorite team of all time, good local kid, I tell you what... <laughs> and, um, yeah, the Canucks world implodes. Uh, gee, I know you were... I was really upset because, I don't know, I, I think in my mind, for some reason, I had Bob Patty as kind of like a Rick Rippin light. Mm. Um, I, I just loved his attitude. I loved his scrappiness. And, yeah. and to be honest, so far this year, he's been the best fighter the Canucks have had. Um, and I mean, he's and he's gone out and actually, you know, stood up for himself pretty well in fights, and unlike another player who seemed to get the snot beat out of him every time. Um, uh, who? Who? <laughs> Come on, gloomy BB. <laughs> we we just made him gloomy <laughs> BB. I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's the Dutch Gretzky. When did you ever see Gretzky fight? Exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and Lapierre hasn't really. Whoa, whoa, whoa! See, this is how Lapierre here. fights. Okay, not the face, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Although, and to be fair, did you see Volpatti play last night for Washington? I didn't see it he yet. He got his ass whooped. <laughs> huh? Actually, yeah. Uh, he was, yeah. yeah. He got his, he turtled that. Welcome to the really? Eastern Conference. <laughs> did he turtle like Tutu? <laughs> Not quite that badly. He took a couple punches first, but yeah. he went, he, he ducked. Yeah. 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 But uh, to Zito's credit, he is, I'd say he's a little better of a fighter. Oh. If we're, that's what we're looking for. Okay. That's what we're looking for. If you want a tough guy on yeah. our team, Zito is an upgrade over Volpatti. But... Mm-hmm. Well, Patty is a more complete fourth line player. You know, I don't see him doing anything apart yeah. from dumping the puck and fighting. And the other thing about Volpatti was that like, he was really, you know, pretty responsible for his position, mm-hmm. which I enjoyed watching too. If I may, I was at the game last night. Uh... <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> How do you say you're at the game without sounding like you're showing off? I don't know. And in, in a moment or two, you're gonna name drop. <laughs> I was at the game and I had a good chance. Actually, the night before, I got a chance to meet. Okay, never mind. Oh. I was at the game last night and uh, Matt Lee. Matt Lee, we're gonna get you on one of these things one day. He actually. Uh, him and I were watching the warm up, and when Sestito came out, oh my gosh, the guy is massive. He's six foot five, and he just he looked like he was standing on something. Like he could see literally above everyone. So in the warm up, he looked big. He was. I think he's trying to figure out who was who on his team. He's just kind of standing there to the side. But once the game started, every shift we talked about Kessler either hitting or getting hit. Mm-hmm. Sestito was the same thing. I don't even remember that one of his first shifts. He actually got nailed once by someone that was like yesterday. Mm-hmm. Then he did some nailing, got in this fight, you know, in, endured and stuff to yeah. the fans. He just made things happen. Probably the you know the adrenaline of the first game, of course. We'll see what happens as things settle down. But you know they're trading Volpatti for him. It's 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 a trade off. Maybe just a bigger body. I'd like yeah. to see what he can do. He says he likes to get garbage goals and go to the net. So we'll see what happens. Well, that's Except, exactly what the Canucks need. Though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, but that's saying role. That's the role of a role player. Yes. You go to the dirty areas. You go and get dirty goals. Yeah. And you do the dirty work. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all blue collar. Yeah. So tell me, uh, well, Lincoln Curve Millionaires jerseys. What do you guys like about them? What do you hate about them? I just like the feel of it. I, I think I, I love anything that looks vintage. So for me, I'm, I'm all over it. I'm just uh, trying to decide uh, what cresting I want on it. And I'm definitely going to be getting one. I love it. It, it looks sharp. I think it was, any change is nice. Um, I think it'll look good against Detroit. Who knows what they're going to be wearing. But I just think any any change is refreshing to the eyes. And I, as long as it doesn't change the way the team plays, mm-hmm. I'm good with it. It looks it's kind of cool, actually, seeing it in the pictures in the video. So better or worse than the uh, Maroon Orca third jersey? Oh god, those were awful. Those better. Were so terrible. Way better. Yeah, these ones Way look better. these ones that I would I would wear them. I don't think I'm gonna buy one, but I, I like them. You know? Okay. How about the salmon skate third jersey? Oh, good oh god. that was my favorite ever. <laughs> yes. We'll, we'll see. I, I actually I don't mind them. I, I actually they're okay. It's yeah. vintage to me. I just 
it's marketing. Yeah. Um, I much prefer them sticking with their, you know, third jersey that they have right now. So I guess uh, the last thing I, yep. I wanted to talk a little bit about is some questions that uh, we obviously were soliciting. I mean, you, the viewers want to ask us stuff, and we, the experts, like to provide answers. <laughs> <laughs> We're experts. We're what do we got, Ed? What do we got? Experts. Okay. So our first question this week comes from Daryl Jones on Facebook. Uh, so he asks, coaching decisions. Is it time to get a new style of game for the Canucks? All we know is goaltending. Wait. All we all know goaltending is not our issue. Pace yourself, Ed. <laughs> they can only do so much behind a scattered team. So coaching decisions. I'll go. I'm you ready. Go, you go. Keep Ballard in the lineup. <laughs> the guy is awesome. Did I tell you that I talked to him on Friday night at the Canucks season two? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> were, were you at an event with the Canucks? <laughs> you were at a Canucks game? Yeah. Holy smokes! I actually told Keith Ballard, good job. I'm really happy. Wait, that are you I... the mayor of Rogers Arena? No, yet? no, no. I don't know how to check in for square. Oh. People, just call me, people just call me square. Anyways, I would keep <laughs> Keith Ballard in. I would use um, Barker and Alberts as insurance or backup. And um, I think he's doing okay with the, the forward lines. You can only do with what <coughs> you can only work with what you got. And we'll see. Like I said, that that Hanson Higgins Raymond line is the first time they played together. I don't mind his coaching. Sometimes I think he's a little fickle with his lines, and he changes them too quickly. Mm -hmm. But maybe the lineup that takes that. But I think um, I am actually fine with the way he's coaching. The go yeah. From goaltending defense out, it's the way we've won those Presidents trophies. It's the way that we've, we've won our division, and I think it's the way we're used to winning. Yeah. I think I was going to, you know, I was thinking along the same lines. Of, you know, it, it's we've won two President's Trophies mm -hmm. now, and, and I know a lot of people say it doesn't mean anything. For sure. But, you know, it, it, there is something to be said about winning the league every year. Yep. In the regular season, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with Ballard. Like I said before, I just feel bad for the guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody who's in a doghouse needs to have a chance to work their way back so so you're saying every dog has its day oh wow wait that's oh, such a genius down. phrase <laughs> oh my gosh did you just come up with that i just did i totally did ed where were you um, coaching i have a couple i mean i would put Raider on a on a top six line yeah because not because he's, he's it's because he's not really thriving in a fourth line role and he's more of an offensive player we should have the the grinder guys on the fourth line mm. I understand why he does it to teach the guys some defensive responsibility, defensive responsibility. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, I, I think we need to put the team together more with more of the, the playoffs yeah. in mind. It's like you a know? Schrader and his two bodyguards skating around. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I know, that's exactly it. Did you see Schrader skating next to us? Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, you see him 6'5", Schrader's 5'9", that's yeah. 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 who it skates on, and he's like this sure. much taller than the guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the other thing I would be is to juggle on lines maybe a little less. Right. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's always been that whenever our guys find chemistry, then then maybe just breaks them up. Let the guy that's thriving on different lines try to jumpstart some other guys. But at the same time, should you keep them together, develop some more chemistry? I mean, I don't know of any other NHL team that where their top six is always in a jumble, yeah. sure. apart from Henrik, Daniel, yeah. and Burke. Definitely agree. Yeah. Um, my my one thing actually has to do with special teams. I'm all about simplicity. Mm. Like to me, the Canucks power play has become uh, such a known entity that it gets shut down quite easily. Mm -hmm. And it's it's almost as if they're trying to set up every pretty play. Back pass through the middle. Yeah, like the only way yeah. they enter the enter the the offensive yeah. zone. Got a yeah. back pass. Got a yeah. back pass. Got a back yeah. pass. And so. To me, and you, you carry the puck through, you dump it in, you have a strong forecheck, you, you then get the puck, and you look to cycle it to the, you know, boom from the blue line. Edler, Garrison, I mean, BX and Hamhus can uh, throw it in with the best of them. Yep. So why yep. not, you know, if, <coughs> sure, you might not get as many pucks through, but get those guys thinking that, oh my goodness, this is what they're going to do. You're eventually going to see the... The, the forwards play a little bit farther out because they're going to want to get out there and, and get into that shooting lane a whole lot quicker. Well, guess what that's doing? It's now opening up space where the Canucks want to go and start throwing the puck laterally. Spoken like a true coach. Oh, I never played hockey in my life, and yet I've watched enough of it to know yeah. that, you know, simple seems to work. Yeah. You know, you hear that all the time. Every analyst says that, oh, they're squeezing their tick, uh, stick a little hard. Mm -hmm. They're trying... Uh, to do more than they can, yeah. and that's that's what happens when you, you're not things aren't going well. So why not simplify? Mm -hmm. Kiss. Keep it simple. Stupid. No, you're not stupid. I just I don't know why. <laughs> what the heck was that? Wow. No, I, oh my god! We're never gonna be able to get guests on ever. Again. I was looking that you way. Can, so you not cool. Except <laughs> my apology. <laughs> 
I'll uh, see myself out now. Uh, Have a good rest of the show, guys. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, another question there, Ed. Uh, this time, I think we got one from Twitter. Yeah, um, so from Twitter, you want to check in here? Spencer Dubas. Is that how I pronounce that? Spencer Dubas. Well, I'm going to put it up on our video anyway. He asked, <laughs> if you can play GM for a day, what would be the first blockbuster move you would make? Well... Uh, oh. CHB or Matt Lee, to give you guys time to think, actually replied to this saying he'd trade Luongo for a Huberdo, Jugstad, Goodbranson, and probably a first rounder. Um, I'm pretty sure Matt Lee's playing George McPhee for a day <laughs> <laughs> because there's no way he's getting that out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Maybe if Mike Milbury was on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good old Mike. Speaking of Luongo, I love Luongo. I would yeah. actually, if I was GM for a day, I would explore trading Corey Schneider. Um, yeah, wow. I would. Um, I just think Luongo has got many good years in him. I think Schneider is more marketable, and I think we could get more for him. I, I think it's obvious, but I, I would look for a, a strong scoring uh, winger or second line center and, and more. But I, I, I would just explore that at least. And maybe Gillis is. Okay. I, I call myself a Luongo apologist. Mm-hmm. Um, my love for him is apparent. Uh, I mean, first game I was really playing Paul Schneider. <laughs> But um, I don't know. I, 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 I agree with you. I mean, he's a younger guy um, with you know more time left on his career. So who knows? I mean, at this point, I don't know what we can do. I don't know what other teams are going to give us for any of our assets. That, I mean, without seriously damaging the core structure of the team, what can we really do? I, yeah. think, I think Gillis is actually a little handcuffed at this point in time. Yeah. And I don't, I don't see a blockbuster happening until the season's done. Well, I'm actually, I like Luongo, I really do, and I have no problem who goes, who stays, uh, between him and Schneider. I would do something entirely different. I would totally invite bloggers to be part of the community, and I would normalize <laughs> the relationship between the team and social media, including bloggers. Wow. What about journalists? Well, journalists, they, they're okay, too. Hmm. I guess. They're okay. <laughs> they're not stupid? Not at all. They're some oh, of the smartest people around. Oh, that's good. So, I think I think our conversation <laughs> has probably moved to a point where you two might hurt each other. So I'm, I think I better wrap this All up. All right, let's do it. Before I do, though, I have an announcement I'd like to make, and uh, it's pretty exciting. cool, pretty cool. Um, we're going to uh, be having a tweet-up here at the Hog Shack. You've heard it here first, a CHB tweet-up. It's going to be here at the Hog Shack. It's actually on a Saturday afternoon when... Uh, we're uh, going to be watching the Canucks face the uh, the LA Kings of all teams. Wow. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. So we're going to actually have more details up on <laughs> CHB soon. It'll be great food, great barbecue. There'll be prizes. Uh, and it's, it's going to be real social. Obviously, uh, the team has its own official food up. But yeah, I'll be, be here. here. And yeah. we want you to be here. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful, sunny, steeston, hog shack. Yeah. Fabulous yeah. place. So again, uh, CHB is going to have more information on that. Uh, also, wait, the same Kings that we beat 5-2 last night. When you were at right. the game. Okay. Where you were at the game? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but Clay you. won't be at this game because it's in L.A. <laughs> wait, but, unless. 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 True, true, true. <laughs> but predictions, predictions. We always got to get into our predictions. So the oh. last so episode, <laughs> I believe, Ed, uh, we all got it wrong. Yeah. We all got it wrong. There was nothing we got right. Yeah. <laughs> so by our rules, Ed should have bought these drinks again. Yeah, Ed, okay. Ed should have bought another oh, round. we're not doing that. Okay. Then I'll buy them every single time. <laughs> <laughs> That's not showing a lot of confidence in yourself, yeah. Mr. Lyle. So what are we doing? I'm not, I'm so, not psychic. So we're oh, going to predict uh, winner, we're going to predict score, and we're going to predict... What's the third one? Uh, we're going to predict the player with the best face-off percentage. Both on teams. The, on on, uh, on Vancouver Canucks. Oh, on the Canucks. Vancouver Canucks. Because oh, okay. there's a lot you can pick on the San No, 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 yeah. that's right. On the Vancouver Canucks. Seeing as center is an, uh, a position that's uh, hit the news recently. So I'll okay. start off. Yep, let's do it. I'm going to say that the Canucks are going to win 4 2. I'm going to say that uh, Chris Tanev is going to have the best <laughs> face off percentage. Of course. So you're Gladys. Lying great Gladys? Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be a little tighter than that. Uh, I'm going to say 3-2, and I'm going to go with Hank. Canucks explosion. What? 5-1. Wait, is that because you're going to be there? Actually, yes. I'm taking my lovely wife, Gail, to the game. <laughs> but then I'm not going for a month. Anyways, Canucks 5-1. Henrik as well. Same as you. Henrik with the best face-off percentage. Hello? Me, I'm going with 4-2. Same as Chris. Canucks win. And I think Lappy is going to have to face-off percentage. 
You know, I, are we ever going to predict the Canucks lose? <laughs> No, no, no. Okay. Well, not until they, not until they like play the black. Oh no, I don't think they will. I don't think they will. And Chris, okay. with all due respect, I like Ed's chances considering you guys picked the same score, but he actually took a, a centerman. <laughs> it's kind of like the Price is White thing when no, some guy oh, picks yeah. hundred hey, and one hundred and one. Yeah, there you go. Hey, just want to throw it out there. While we might get the score right, he doesn't necessarily get lappy right if Hank gets it. Well, Could there's no chance you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm looking for is a tie. Oh, Chris is buying That's true. If, if we have a tie, oh, yeah, Ed buys drinks. No, if Ed has his if, if all our centers are below 500, Chris is right. No, he's got zero. Zero out of zero is still zero. But zero out of zero. Well, zero out of zero is not 100. <laughs> zero wins and zero losses. That's what No, it's zero, man. <laughs> Okay, go back to math. Go back wow. to math. Wow. <laughs> wow, and this is a guy that has to do math for a living. Yeah, no, I don't. I think he's so All right, all right. <laughs> well, let's wrap it up. Um, uh, as always, though, we've, we've run out of time. Uh, many apologies to Jordan Bowman. We'll have to bump him over to the next show. Uh, but the phone's going off, so CHB out. <laughs> it's burning. Good timing. Come on.